In my previous video, I did all the major cuts for the 4 inch roof chop on my 51 Chevy Rat Truck budget build. Um, and I could drop the roof so we could get a general idea. Now it's time to do the pie cuts and relief cuts so we can get things to line up. I'm going to weld the whole thing together and then we can finally see what she's going to be looking like. <laughs> Coming up. This section here, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. Um, so I don't really have any problems here. Yeah. It's basically ready to be tucked together. Which is exactly what I did. So this is the first part of my roof that is tack welded on. Next I want to sort out this misalignment. So I first tacked on this piece of flat bar here, yeah, just to keep me lined up. It's only tacked on the bottom, so the top can move, it's not attached. So next I made this cut here, and I opened it up a little bit in a pie shape. And now look what can happen. This piece can now move in. So look at this, I've got it pulled in now with the clamp. That corner there is my concern, this is flush there, I'm flush here. The gutter I can fine tune a little bit later. Now this is looking very good. I'm going to give it a light tack right there. Okay, I gave it a few more tacks. Now I can take my clamp off. And I can take my guiding piece, my whatever you call it. And there we are, we are basically in place. I'm also going to make a cut down here. And because now the metal can move, I can actually start pulling this in. I might actually have to make another one, we'll see. So using this big ass old clamp here, I'm now pulling the panel in here until it lines up and then I'm tacking it. So I'm working my way along, I started here and I'm going that way. And you can see here yeah, how it's now starting to overlap on my relief cut here. Yeah? So I'm going to actually now cut that overlap away with the grinder so that I effectively remove like a dart shaped section and I'm thus creating like a pie cut. So now this panel can move in to line up. So I'm flush here, so I can give it a little tack. And I'll check the next spot, pull it in with the clamp if need be. Once that's flush, I'll give it a tack and so I'll work my way along. So look here, yeah, if I push in here, yeah, I can be okay there, but I'm sort of, I've got a high spot here, yeah, which is going to be difficult to get in, so I think I'm going to make another relief cut right here. And there it is. So now it's much better, look, you can get this one in quite easy, and the same here. There's a slight overlap there at the moment. So I can just clean that out with the grinder. <laughs> We're getting there! So I'm just trying it. And I see there's a 
spot right here where it catches. So yeah, sometimes it is necessary to just clean up your cut lines a little bit to make sure that you've got clearance. I'm just going to use a little the grinder to just cut it lightly there. So same deal, I just started here and I worked my way along. And now I've just got this little piece left that needs to be pulled in and tacked when it's flush. Okay, like a man, so this corner is done. A repeat exercise on the other side. <laughs> Okay, sweet man, this whole back section is tacked together and sorted. Let's go look at those A pillars up front. Right, so I've got to make a pie cut here in this section or in this region to move this A pillar that way a little bit. But this lead here, I knew this was going to happen. There's bare metal. Up there's bare metal. And we from there all the way down to here, you can see it's been filled in with lead so obviously there was a weld seam here and back in the day this was fed out with lead and this is right in the spot where I actually would like to cut it so yeah if I want to weld in this section I'm gonna have to grind out all of this lead so all of this is lead And that's where I want to make my cut line. Down here it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to cut through this lead, probably grind it all out. <laughs> and I can promise you I'm going to have a fight down the line with contamination from lead on this, on this joint here. But what can I do? Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> So I've cut both A pillars and I'm going to use my ratchet strap here to pull them in so it'll pull both at the same time. Let's check it up closer. You can see that the cut is closed up right there and I do need to come a little bit more. So I'm just going to give this a bit, of, bit more of a relief. So I've checked both sides and I'm pretty much on target. I've checked this gap on both sides and adjusted them to be the same. And looking at it from here, this line flows quite nicely. So there's no need to do anything here and cut a relief cut there. Thank God for small miracles. <laughs> So nothing is welded or tacked at this point, not on the A pillars, not on this connection point here. So the front of the roof is still completely loose, it's just held in place by clamps. That's also a kind of a clamp I guess. So I think this is a good time to just stand back and reflect a little bit, double check everything, make sure everything is square and level and nice, instead of just rushing in and tacking away. When I was much younger, I was taught by a craftsman and he said to me, the normal saying is, don't just stand there, do something. But sometimes you've got to not just do something, you've got to stand there first. This is one of those occasions. So looking at it from up here, it all looks symmetrical. It looks lined up. I can't see any problems. It checks out here from the side. 
The view here from the back is good. Everything looks great. So I think I'm going to tack this thing together. Let's do it. Oops. <laughs> Bit of a hole. These were the pieces that got cut out. Don't throw them away. We're going to be needing some of this later on. Okay, so now we need a piece to fill in with here. That's got the same profile. And the section that was removed here is going to be perfect to make that filling piece with. Because it's got a profile that's almost exactly the same. I'm going to cut this off because I don't need it. So I've cut these pieces out of it now. Here's the original section. Um, so I just cut a narrower piece and split it into two. So this little section, which now matches this, can go in there. So I just need to line it up and then I can tack weld it in place. Okay, I got it in place. I have a little bit of clamping and pushing around, but it's all nicely lined up now. Still got to cut this. So I'm just going to take the grinder and cut it through here on that line there. Okay, like I said, my info piece is in place, all lined up. I've also got this piece on the inside tacked in place. Okay, Duffy, now repeat the exercise on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've got all my pieces together, it's all tacked everywhere, so I'm slowly starting to weld it up. Um, very short welds, jumping around, don't want to put too much heat in it. Um, yeah, pretty boring process, <laughs> so I'm sure you don't want to watch me welding this thing together. So I'm going to do this while you're not watching me. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Much later now, and I've got all the seams welded and grinded, so we're getting somewhere. I've still got to do the ones here on the inside, but um, yeah, I'll tackle them once I've got, uh, only after I've got the internal bracing removed. So this little full piece is in place, but I've still got to deal with this gap that runs all the way across the roof. So if I was chasing a flawless paint job, one would obviously have to use a piece that fits in the gap, that's going to be flush. We would have to spend a long time welding it up very slowly, grind it flush, then spend even more time with a hammer and a dolly, and probably even a planishing hammer to get everything nice and smooth, um, so that you can... <laughs> Apply as little bondo as possible to get that flawless finish. But hey, that sounds like a lot of work, man. That's not my scene. <laughs> we build rat rods here. Life's too short for all that work. And flawless paint finishes. So I'm going to try something else. There's something important you got to remember. Shiny paint just causes stress, man. <laughs> I've still got these pieces that I cut out of the back of the cab when I chopped the roof they're about roughly 3 inches wide so if I stick them over here like so to just lap the gap I've got about a half inch overlap on each side I'm 
I'm just going to stitch them on to my much loved stitches <laughs> and just provide a little bit of contrast to everything else and make it more interesting. A lot less work and we are recycling. <laughs> So I'm giving it a tuck every inch and a half. I've made myself some marks. So it's just nice and equally spaced. And then I'm going to work my way along, starting from here and working towards the center of the roof. One of my favorite tools, man, and it's just a piece of round bar welded to a length of pipe. A push stick and I just push down you could put your body weight against it as well until I'm flush and do my little tack and so I work my way along Whatever it takes, man, I've got the roof propped up on the inside with some wooden sticks while I'm tacking it from the top. Right, time to do some sewing. What can I say? I like my stitches. <laughs> so someone asked me about the stitch business. Um, I forgot your name now, please forgive me. Um, it's essentially a decorative weld. So I've got my amps cranked right down to prevent burning through on the thin sheet metal. They're about an inch long and I spaced them every inch and a half. Of course, important to jump around and do a little one here and one there and one there and so on and not just start from one end and work right through you probably end up with too much distortion from the heat <laughs> well, let me add, um, it's always a good thing to just experiment a little bit on a scrap piece of the same thickness just to get your settings right when you want to do these stitches to make sure you don't burn through that's a mess, you don't want it <laughs> so while I'm waiting for my stitch weld to cool down a little bit I thought I'd just show you this Obviously, I want my weld seams to go back to rust so that it can blend in with the rest of the truck. So I've just wiped on a thinned down solution of some swimming pool acid on here. Hey, this was done maybe an hour ago. Can you believe it? It's already starting to rust. So I'm just going to leave that now. Um, it's definitely accelerating that rust process, which is exactly what we want. Sweet. Finish with my sewing. <laughs> right across the roof now we just gotta get it to rust so that it can blend in yeah and if the roof is not perfectly smooth it had a quite a few dents hey who cares it's just a rat rod eh? <laughs> here's the bird's eye view if i stand on the back of the truck front half and the back half is definitely stitched together <laughs> Um, I thought I would just show you this, quite a close-up, you can see a pronounced sort of indentation right there. That is of course because when we drop the roof, there's a change in the geometry of this whole business. So yes, if I, and the, the, the challenge here is you can't actually hammer and dolly it because it's double skinned, so you can't get a dolly in from the inside. So um, yeah, if you wanted to do a fancy, shiny, <laughs> go fast paint job 
gonna have to use some Bondo here. But I, I think many of you know already how I feel about Bondo. Life is too short to be sanding Bondo. <laughs> So I've still got to do something about this joint on the inner skin, right here. There's quite a bit of surgery going on in this corner, here on the inner skin. I've done quite a few pie cuts already. And yeah, you do whatever it takes. Got a piece of scrap screwed on to this part here. Then a clamp so that I can lever it to line my edges up. Quite a mission, but I'm getting there. Can you see the hole? That's what happens if you forget to crank down the amps when you start to tack, tack this thin stuff together. <laughs> it's, it's a boring business welding all of this together, I have to say. Like little one inch spots at a time. But somebody's got to do it. And only someone around here is me. I'm nearly done though. Hey, and then I still have to grind it all. Holy cow. Much later. Jeez, I'm happy that's finally done. <laughs> Just gotta wait for it to rust up now. They can get rid of the shine. So let's do a before and after. Um, with this joint here on the B-pillar. It's all nice and shiny, but obviously I want this to go rusty and blend in with the rest of it, so I'm just going to apply my swimming pool acid. And now we're going to let it stand. And then I'll take a shot again. And that's what it looks like three hours later. So you can see that the swimming pool acid helps a lot to accelerate the rust. And that's what the weld seam looks like the next day. With a little bit more uh, rust, you will not even be able to tell where it was done. My roof job is done and I'm one happy dude, man. <laughs> it turned out really well. Um, I think the fact that I've used my swimming pool acid to accelerate the rust on my weld seams um, it's now gotten to a stage where you can hardly even see it. It's all blended away. Um, I think it's quite a subtle chop, in my opinion. Enough to give it a radical cool look, but not so much that it would be an uncomfortable thing to drive. Got my little bit of rake in the roof. I got almost four inches in the front, three inches in the back. So yes, I'm a very happy dude. I think the fact that I kept the back window the same size makes the whole thing quite subtle. <laughs> it's three inches dropped, but because the window is still the same size, kind of messes with the mine a little bit. I think it re worked really well. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Thanks for spending some time with me out here in my forest workshop today. Appreciate it. So I'll see you guys in the next video when I'm gonna be building a custom bonnet or hood for this truck. Until then, have a good one.